and so lovely to see you. Thank you for joining me. Could you please give me your full name and your title? Hi, Lauren. Yes, of course. Thank you. And very nice to be here with you today. Uh, my name is Hans Heiligers. Um, I am uh, working for Intercontinental Hotels Group, Hotels and Resorts in Japan. Um, I am the head of Japan for the operations here and the CEO of the joint venture that we have with um, with ANA here in Japan, which is quite unique. And I can talk about that a little bit later. So that's what I do. Uh, and um, what it entails at the moment is we're looking after 37 hotels here across multiple brands of ISG. And we've brought some new brands to market. We're still growing. We signed one of the biggest deals that we ever did in our um, region uh, last week with a thousand rooms conversion. So that's fantastic. And three hotels. Um, so all that's really good. So yeah, it's going well in that in that perspective. I mean, business obviously is not as good as we would like it to be, but the the growth of the estate is 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 good. Um, and, and we're quite optimistic about that market. So yeah, no, that's going well. Wonderful. And who's the leader who has inspired you the most? Oh, that's that's a that's a really good question. But I and, and you would love you would love to hear what I'm going to, what I'm about to tell you. Um, it is certainly somebody from your country. I've, I've had the pleasure and the honor to, to live and work in South Africa for combined seven years. I was there twice, uh, and it has to be it has to be Nelson Mandela. And I guess many people will will refer to him as an inspiration. Um, but I, I I can point down to a few sp very specifics why I felt he was so inspiring. Um, I, I did have the pleasure to meet him at three occasions. Um, of course, very brief because my role was the general manager of a hotel and basically you stand in front of the door when he arrives. Um, but the first impression and the very first time I met him, uh, and I recall very well, he, he, he came out of the car. There was not big escort. It was all very simple and basic. Uh, and he was actually on his farewell tour. It was in 1999, actually, when he was um, stepping down as, as president. And he was doing a farewell tour and it was an event in the hotel that I was managing at the time. And, uh, and he came to that event. Uh, and I remember he came in a fairly simple car. He was driven there and he got out of the car and, and he stops and have a conversation with you. And to me, that conversation lasted like 30 minutes and it was literally probably a minute and a half. But his ability to zoom in on you as a person and make you feel that you are now the most important person in his life at that point in time to validate that person yeah, and to value the encounter and to be interested and all, it was just incredible, right? Every single leadership lesson you can think of was packed in those 90 seconds. Yeah? And, 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 and that's how I, and I feel, you know, this is, this is now, uh, what is this? That's, that's 12 years ago, no, 22 years ago, right? And it is like if it was yesterday, right? It was so impressive. Um, that's one, that, that, that was the first, imp the first impression I had from uh, from him as a person, and that was that, that was incredible. I, I've had the pleasure of of, of seeing him in public speaking. Um, uh, uh, one time I saw him uh, in a public speaking uh, address, actually also in the late '90s, just before the Rugby World Cup in I forgot where it was, probably in the UK, I think. And and it was a farewell dinner to see the the, the Springboks off to to the World Cup, and it was a with all the sponsors, and it was a room full of six seven hundred people. And a dinner, um, and 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 as it was in those days, um, I would say ninety percent of the room were 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 white people, actually, right? And um, and maybe you remember this, Lauren. It was a fantastic ad um, where you had it was a voiceover of Mandela uh, that was promoting rugby uh, amongst all South Africans. It was an incredible ad. And so at some point in time, they were playing the ad around the on projections around the room, and all of a sudden, Mandela entered. Uh, and that was a surprise. That was a surprise visit. It's incredible. You could hear you could hear a pin drop. Then there was this standing ovation of every single person in that room. So that's the impact that he has had on everybody in South Africa. And these were very white male South Africans, right? But the level of respect and the almost the adoration, I would say, was something that 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 fascinated me as 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 a non South African. And then his speech was was 10, 15 minutes, and he doesn't say much. That's the power of, he's, he's got the power of not using too many words, but whatever he says has got so much impact. Um, and, and so that's that's another uh, incredible, um, incredible uh, learning. And, and I think, look, it's a gift at the same time. Um, and I guess what makes him complete as a leader that 
if we if we think about what he had to go through, um, even to an extent uh, in the run up to becoming a president, on kind of like disengaging with his closest people because he wanted something big to happen that is bigger than everybody. It was well beyond anybody's imagination. And he was prepared to make a lot of sacrifices for that, very important sacrifices, uh, including probably not being the best family man in the world, but, but you know, that's what he did because that was important to him. And the outside world could only see that as something incredible. But obviously in the background, lots of things happened that were, were, were seriously tough decisions. So I guess the other learning there is you're just not gonna get there without making the really, really tough decisions, right? Even about people that are very close to you. And, and you know this very well, probably from your dad that he had to do that many times. So on so many fronts, he's an inspiration. And of course we all read his books. Um, there is a, there is a, a very nice little uh, short story book of, of the same author that, that wrote the um, um, A Long Walk to Freedom, which was like the 13 or 14 um, uh, learnings of Nelson Mandela, and 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 I like that book. I bought that book for um, all my son's classmates when they um, when they finished school. Uh, that was in Dubai at the time, but I ordered the book and gave every single one of them because there's just beautiful life lessons. And what makes them relevant is that they're not made up by some good, somebody who's thinking of these things. They are life lessons. He lived all of this, right? Um, and that and that makes him an incredible um, incredible leader. So yes. Uh, continues to be an inspiration and there's so much you can um, always go back on and say ah you know what yeah that's the way to do it right and um, and I guess the big thing that we all talk about today which is important for all of us is is when we talk about um, diversity equality and inclusion right well there you have the living example of what that actually means right and um, that is probably going to be forever for us to look up to because um, uh, the way that he stood into in, in that space was incredible, right? Um, so yeah, I can go on forever as you can hear on that particular topic because he is an inspiration. And what is the greatest learning in your career so far? Um, you know, I've had the I've had the fortune to to work in so many countries and cultures, and I guess the greatest learning that I have is that you just never stop learning. And and I know that sounds a bit like a cliche, but what I mean to say is that um, every time again, when you when you have the opportunity to work in a culture that's not your own, um, and every time you think that okay, I got this, right? Um, and then you realize you don't, yeah. Um, and, and the deeper you get into it, the deeper you start to learn that, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm a guest here um, and I need, to, I need to learn to understand why people think in certain ways so that I can add value because that's why I'm here. I'm here to add value. I'm not here to just go with the flow kind of thing because there's no point. So the thoughtfulness that needs to go into how do I add value? So I've been a foreigner my entire life. In my entire career, I've been a foreigner, other than the first three years, right? So the biggest learning is, and that, that didn't come in the first two years, that came at the latter part. The biggest learning is you have to be incredibly thoughtful about adding value and what that's going to look like and what that means to others. So, and the complexity of that is incredible. And in fact, the more I travel around, the more I respect it and the harder it actually becomes because you've lost a little bit at an older age, you lost a little bit, the kind of like, you know, let's say fair and just let's go and just do it and all that. Right. And you become more thoughtful about these things and more aware of self as well. So, so you actually make it a bit more complex for yourself as well. But at the same time, you might, you might tend to be a bit more successful because the thoughtfulness is something that is appreciated. Right. So, um, so that's probably the biggest learning, um, that I had. And, and so that will never stop. Even if I would go back to my home country one day and work there, well, I haven't, I haven't worked there for 40 years. So, so that will become like going to another country, you know, and have to learn this all over again. Absolutely. And what, what is your greatest success? So far? Um, 
this my I, I know and, and again it's I, I think my greatest success is to finally learn to not be afraid to fail so uh, and 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 i know that you know when you i i did not go to some huge university i'm, I'm really somebody who grew up in the business which is going to be very difficult for, for future generations because the ask is so much bigger these days right and um, we'll talk about that maybe in a minute, but, um, and I had to learn a lot. I had to do a lot of self learning over the last 30 years to just catch up. You know, otherwise I would have been left behind. Um, so, so the biggest failure in that sense is that, um, is, is you, you gotta really learn from you. You should, don't be afraid to fail. Just don't be afraid of it. Take it on the chin and move on. Um, and and I've moved on, um, but it has impacted me, particularly in the earlier part of my career. And and if I look back at it now, I said, okay, of course you can say in hindsight, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that. No, we all get that, um, but that's not how it works, right? You, you make the mistake at the time you make the mistake. But what you can think about is don't think about don't think about you could have avoided a mistake because you can't. What you need to think about is is how do you stand up. Right, uh, and, and I think that's many people have said that. Right, falling, are we all going to fall down? But it's about how you stand up, and and I think there's probably a few times that I said that I would say to myself, yeah, you could have stood up a little bit better there for yourself and for and, and for others. Um, and so yeah, that's hmm. um, yeah, a lot of learnings there. I mean, there's lots of stories, so, and we don't have that much. We don't have that much time, but. But they're, but they're definitely, they're definitely, um, don't be afraid to fail. Be comfortable with failing. Amazing. And if we flip that on its head, um, and if you believe in failure, what is your greatest failure? Um, I would say, um, I would say, you see, I, I thought about, I thought about that question and, and, and um, at some point you can refer it to a move that you made in your career and say, oh, I shouldn't have done that or whatever it is. But that's way too easy to say, because in fact, in hindsight, when I looked at it, I'm glad I did it. I, I don't, I have no regrets, by the way, in that sense. So, so that's not really what I think. Um, I think. I think my greatest failure, I should have gone to university, definitely. Um, I had the opportunity. Uh, I wanted to work. I did go to work. I, I mean, I did hotel school. I mean, don't make, make no mistake. But, but I, 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 so I, I think I should have done that. And and hey, God knows, maybe I'm still going to do it. That could happen. But um, but that's something um, that's something that um, that I would say um, because there was nothing that told me that I could not do that. That was a choice I made. Um, and I would say, mm, no, that's not a that's not a smart choice. And it, I got away with it to a certain extent. You never get away with it entirely, but that's because of a moment in time and a generation and what have you. Try that today, no way, no way. So, hmm. Well, it's not too late, like you say. Never. To, that's the point. Never too late. Stay young at heart and stay young at mind, and you can still do anything you want to do. And can you tell me a story about an incident or an event that might have influenced you as a leader or sort of changed you as a professional? Um, yes, I can. Um, there, there's again, there's there's many. It's a, it's a, it's a big it's a, it's a long story book, but um, I've had there's probably two incidents, but I'll, I'll pick one of the two. Um, that come to mind, and I, I don't want to elaborate too much on the incident, but it was it was a it was in a in an Af not in South Africa, but in another African northern African country where I worked, and and we had a bit of a, a, a labor conflict um, in the hotel. I was probably the only, but together with one other person, we were the only non-local, non-language speaking people, um, and somehow uh, it came out that. We were probably labeled as the front runners of that conflict of, of causing that conflict we were managers we were senior managers actually um, i was the number two of that hotel at the time and um 
and I, I got uh, I got abducted with by the union. So I was thrown in a car and into a, it, like out of a movie, right? And it was, so um, I was gen, so I was probably, how old was I? I was 33, 34, maybe. Uh, I was, I was scared. I was really scared, <laughs> really, really scared. And, and while I was sitting in that car and I remember, and I had no clue where I was going. Um, and I was really going through my head to say, okay. So I was going through my head, okay, how do I get out of this, right? Um, and 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 I had no clue, uh, and I had no clue what was going on. And basically, it was all about intimidation, right? It was just all intimidation, and I got back and, and all that. Um, but what of, obviously later on, when I got over the all ex, all the excitement, I, I thought, okay, so what have I done to get myself into such a stupid position, right? I mean, for Christ's sake, yeah. And and frankly, I can't even tell you today because. I think it was purely um, that it needed the, the, the situation needed a face of somebody that can be can be held accountable for for whatever is going on and 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 maybe that's the situation and and so back to the whole multicultural experience and all that so so you think about how, is there anything I could have done should have done and, and and probably maybe yes but I I haven't come up with it yet to be honest <laughs> so so but it was that was a it was a frightening experience and and um and yes so what it does is that it, it makes you think um in situations of conflict in situations of of where you have you know violent violent disagreement on on certain situations that you know the, the role of the leader is not to drive people apart, it's to bring people together, right? So, so what what is your? How do you facilitate that? Um, and and one key lesson there, I think, is by time. Give yourself time. If it's if it's a if it's a serious conflict, because nobody nobody prepares you for this, right? Nobody does, right? So by time, consult uh etc cetera, etc cetera. um and 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 probably if i think back of it that some of these things i may not have done as proper as i could have but uh the learning is certainly by time and you have to learn to to mitigate and to bring people together in 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 whatever form or way but that's that sits with the job and 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 you cannot be biased about that you can't be you know you have to be um you have to be the connector. Um, and that's probably the hardest part of the job sometimes because conflict is around you all the time. It's it's nonstop, right? Small, large, it's there all the time. Yeah. Gosh, <laughs> and if you could, what advice would you give your 18 year old self now? Don't get, don't get abducted by a union. <laughs> no, I would say, um, so as I said to you, go to go to university go study yeah um and not so much so I, whatever it is but go through the discipline of learning something in depth yeah um enjoy the social environment that goes with that in general right because that's learning in itself that's as, as important as the academics is the social structure that you get into because you all of a sudden with all equals we're all doing the same thing right and that's a very important part of of understanding life um so yes that's what i would have done differently but as i said earlier no regrets because that would be silly uh, and the only way to turn this around to say okay well then learn it now yeah amazing thank you so much hans thank you